Hello, how are you? Let's start the second topic in physics, and that is the concepts of scalar and vector. You made me a vector. I used to be a scalar. That is, I have magnitude, I have potential, but no direction. But you, you made me a vector. You gave me direction. <laughs> so that's the difference between the two. Okay? Scalars are quantities with magnitude only, no direction. Examples are speed, how fast, the mass, timbang, or bigat, the energy, ano kalakas, volume, what occupies the, the, the space occupied by an object, a liquid, solid, volume. And another example would be, would be temperature. Diba, pag nilalagnat, you put your thermometer here to determine the temperature. And those quantities are scalar. We don't need to know the direction of those whatever, no? Right? So a scalar quantity are quantities that can be described by a number magnitude only and of course don't forget the unit and vector are quantities with both magnitude and direction so examples of these are velocity zoop, bilis, but going to the left on my perspective zoop, speed or it's it's speed if there's no direction but if i do this velocity it means going to the going upward or going to the right or going downward so there is always direction for velocity because it's a vector quantity a force you push something you push it in this direction you can pull it in that direction so those are different directions one is going on this side to the left let's say and this one to the right okay force is a vector and displacement so let's say I have a, a, a truck here. I move from this location to that location. This is distance. But when you say the object is displaced from this position to the right, that's displacement. Okay? A displacement is a vector quantity. It has direction. So we know that it's going somewhere to the right. Okay? So why do we need to study vectors? Because there, there are special quantities that needs to be specified in its direction, right? Like if you push me, the effect is different. If you pull me, the effect is also different. It doesn't, the effect doesn't depend only on the magnitude. It also depends on how you apply the force, whether push or pull, whether to the right, to the left, inward, outward. So there is the importance of direction like you know you haven't noticed but that that the games that you are playing contains a lot of vector equation you don't bother about these equations because you enjoy playing but these are programs in esport for example when when a player kicks a ball on your game then there is the projectile there's the equation there's some some of the games even have the effect to make it real the effect of the wind on the friction right and not only in games and animation in, in movies but also something very important to our lives and that is weather forecasting but you know that the the pattern of the wind of the storm it's a vector there is direction so if it's going southeast northwest in other direction there's importance to the study of vector okay so we usually represent vector as an arrow. Let me draw that to you. So vectors are represented by arrows, okay? So you can use a ruler for this when you draw an arrow. So for example, this is our vector A. Sorry, my line is not that straight now. Or perhaps I can use a line. Let's say this is your vector B. 
let's say this is your vector C. It's uh, now a vector is a direction, so you need to specify the tip of the arrow. So this is the arrow head, and usually the length of this arrow represents the magnitude. How long represents the magnitude, the strength. If it is a force, then the longer the arrow, the higher the value for force. So let's just have a displacement. This one is a displacement. Let's say um, three meters, oops. Let's say three meters, but of course this is somewhere to the north, okay? Okay, so there is an angle here, theta. And the angle here is zero. So this is, let's say, six meters. And, that, and this one, let's say, nine meters. Now again, you have to specify the angle. This one is at some angle north of east. Okay, so let's say, let's say 30 degrees. 30 degrees north of east. How do we how do we say that something is north, something is west? Well, it's our direction. So recall your direction here. This is north, this is south, this is east, and this is west. So that's how you know that you are north of east or west and so on. Okay? So an angle here. If this is the angle here, this is somewhere north of east, right? And so is the other one. Let's say this one is the same. It's also north of east, comma, comma, uh, 30 degree north of east. Well, the 9 meter is basically in this direction here going to the east, okay? So you don't need to specify the angle, you just have to write east, okay? This one, so it's going to the east. So these are vector quantities. Okay, so again, the length of the arrow represents the magnitude and the, the arrow head represents the direction, okay? Now, we also represent vectors if we're going to use not graph but in solving problems equation we also use like this sometimes you encounter this these are vector representation like bold letter a if it's a vector this is vector okay and uh, the scalar would be scalar we we'll just write it as, as A, okay? Sometimes you can write like this, vector A with an arrow on top. So that is also a vector. So that's how we represent vector because it's a different quantity, it has directions. And sometimes we do this, like it is bold already with an arrow. That's also a vector or something like this, something like that. Okay, so these are representations of vectors. For scalar, it's a regular quantity, so you don't put a, sometimes you use x, y, uh, z, or you can have vector b, and so on. But this one you can also use uh, a, b, c, d, or whatever letter. And then the symbol is a little bit different. There's an arrow, it is bold, and uh, again, you can also use just the arrow for, for a vector. Okay, so now let's continue with vector addition and subtraction now vectors are added differently because you need to consider the direction you cannot just add them one plus one equals two two plus two equals four no you need to consider their direction so let's have an example let's have uh, two vectors added together so for example you have vector here Let's say velocity. Let's say um, 2 meters 
What's the direction for this? East. So this one is east. Okay. Or this is a uh, okay. Velocity is meter per second. So let's say meter per second. Velocity. And you have another vector. Like this one, two, let's say three meters. Also east. So if you're going to add them, it's easy to add them because they are in the same direction. So let's have this. Two and then add another one. So something like that. So you can actually just connect them. So this is your two meter per second and this is your three meter per second. So therefore, your answer here, if you get to add them, that's five meter per second to the east. It's easy because it's like a scalar quantity because they're moving in the same direction. But what if one of them is in opposite direction? So let's have, let's compute the same problem, but this time let's say, let's say again you have the one, two, and then you have, this is two meters east, and the other one, let's say, three meters east naman this time it's three meters one two so this is the starting this is now go going west so three meters per second going to the west so if we get to add them take note this is your one two uh, two meters east two meters per second east and this one is One, two, three. Three meters per second west. So this is east, this is west. So take note that the resultant, okay, is different. It's not five, it's not two plus three equals five. Okay, so if this is your vector A, and this is your vector B, then okay this one is actually if okay let, let's say this is your vector a this is your vector b three meters per second then this one is actually negative vector so it's the same as vector b uh, earlier we have a vector b in east but a negative vector is opposite in direction so this one is going west so it's now opposite in direction. So if you're going to look at your uh, this one, this is going west. Okay, so an, a negative vector is just an opposite direction. So if you have positive going east, if you have negative going west. So what is the resultant here? The resultant is something like this. Okay, so that is your resultant. So your, your resultant vector is basically you connected that from the origin to the tip to the last part of the arrow. That is your resultant R. And I think it is about one, one meter west. Okay, so that's the answer for this example. Now, there are three methods of vector addition. These are polygon or para, uh, polygon method or tip to tail, parallelogram method and component method. So I will discuss uh, in the next video, I will divide this, uh, the, the two methods and that is the polygon or tip to tail and parallelogram method. And these are the graphical methods. So see you in the next video.